Hey everyone and welcome back. In our last video we learned how to design the bottle opener seen here using Fusion 360. In this video we're going to go ahead and start manufacturing the bottle opener. So the first thing you want to do is come on up to your workspace and change it to manufacture. And when we want to manufacture something the first thing we always do is start a new setup. When we manufacture a part we need to tell the machine or the computer here a reference location, a G54 reference location, also known as our work coordinate system. And it's customary when we do our first setups to select this back left corner. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is orientate your part so it's situated just like you see mine. Okay, and then select that back left corner and make sure your positive X here, your red arrow, is pointing to your right. Your positive Y axis, your green arrow, is pointing away from you and your positive Z axis or arrow is pointing upwards. Okay, once you've set up your work coordinate system correctly, we can now basically, we can now tell the machine the stock size and we're going to machine this from a block of 6061 aluminum. So now we need to tell the computer our stock size or basically the size of our aluminum block. So to do that, come on over to mode and select fixed size box. For our x-axis, we're going to select 4 inches, and then centered for our depth or y, we're going to set it to 1.5 centered, and then for our height or z, we're actually going to set that to 0.75. Okay, and then we're going to offset it from positive z a distance of 0 0.02 inches. Okay, once you have that all set up, go ahead and select OK. So if you select the bottom face here and we zoom in, you can see that 0 0.02 inches that we offset it. This amount of material, this 0 0.02 inches here, is what we're going to face off in our first operation. So to do that, come on up to 2D and we're going to select a face. Okay. The first thing we want to do is to select our tool. So we're going to, okay, hopefully you installed your bottle opener tool library already. Come on over, select your bottle opener tool library and we want to select our two and a half inch face mill. Okay, go ahead and hit select. We're going to set our spindle speed to 4000. We are also going to set our cutting feed rate to 30. Okay, and for our geometry now, we are going to select this top surface. Be careful, don't select the bottom chamfer, but select the top here. So click there and click there. Okay, and then for our passes tab, all of our default values are fine. Go ahead and select OK. All right, for our next operation, we want to remove the material along the outside or perimeter of our part here. So to do that, we're going to come on up and we're going to select a 2D adaptive clearing operation. And we're going to change our tool now. So come on over to your bottle opener tool library, and we're going to select our quarter inch three flute end mill here. Okay, go ahead and select that guy. Set our coolant to flood. Use a spindle speed. Since this is a roughing operation, we're going to go with some more aggressive feeds and speeds. So we're going to set our spindle speed to 5,000 and our cutting feed right now to 40. And then coming over to our geometry tab, since we want to remove the material around the perimeter or around the part here, we're going to select this outer edge right here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little better. Okay, not this edge, but this edge right here. Okay, and you'll notice that it's not going to cut all the way down to the bottom of our part. Okay, and we can fix that by coming over here to our heights tab. And for our bottom height, we're going to do model bottom. Okay. And then for our passes tab, we're going to use a step over or optimal load of 0 0.08 inches. We're going to check stock to leave. We're going to leave 0 0.02 inches of stock along the walls of our part. And we're going to leave zero along the floor of our part, okay, or stock material. We're going to check smoothing and we're going to select OK. And when you're done, you should end up hopefully with a toolpath that looks something like that guy right there. All right, and for our next operation, we want to remove the material basically in the interior of the part here. So much of the material you see in these hollow areas, we're going to go ahead and start machining out. And to do that, we're going to use a 3D 
adaptive clearing operation. We're going to stick with our same tool. We're going to set our coolant to flood. We're going to use a spindle speed here of 5,000 and once again a cutting feed rate of 40. So the same as last time since this is a roughing operation. However, we're going to set our um, our ramp spindle speed here now to 4,000. We're going to use our ramp feed rate. We're going to set it to 10 and our plunge feed rate to 10. Okay, and then for our geometry tab now, we're going to once again select the same one we selected last time. Okay, and make sure that stock contours box is checked because what that's going to do is it's going to say, hey, we want to machine everything within this boundary. Okay, and we also need to uncheck rest machining. Okay, this will basically ignore um, any tool paths from our previous operations. And moving over to our passes tab now, we're going to use an optimal load or step over of 0 0.08, what we used last time. Okay, we're going to set our maximum roughing step down now to 0 0.5. Make sure the stock to leave box is checked and we want to leave 0 0.02 inches of stock along our walls and 0 0.02 inches of stock along the floors of our part. Okay, we're going to check smoothing and we're going to check feed optimization as well. We're going to come to our linking tab now and we're going to set our helical sort of ramp type here and we're going to use a little bit more aggressive angle here of three degrees. We're going to select OK now. And you should eventually end up with a tool path that looks something like this hopefully. All right so we are all done now with our roughing passes so now we need to come through clean up our part and remove the stock that we left behind with our roughing passes here along the walls and the floors of our part. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is a 2D contour operation. We're going to use the same quarter inch flattened mill that we used before. We're going to set our coolant to flood. However, our spindle speed, since this is a finishing operation, we're going to slow things down a bit with 3000 RPMs and a cutting feed right here of 30 inches per minute. Now for our geometry tab, we're going to select this outer perimeter in this inner hole here. But realize something here that this perimeter doesn't represent the bottom of our part because we selected that chamfer edge. So we want our tool to go all the way down to the bottom of our part. So we can change this in our heights tab. We're going to change the bottom cutting height now to model bottom. And I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to, this is kind of a, a personal preference thing. I'm going to set, I'm actually going to go slightly deeper than the bottom of the part. So I'm going to type in minus 0 0.01 and you should do the same. So your tool cuts slightly deeper than the part. And now what this will do is when we go to face off the remaining material in our second setup, we'll have nice uh, clean separation. Okay. And that'll do it for this operation. Go ahead and select OK and you should end up with the following tool path. All right. So the next thing we want to do is to remove the stock along this floor here as well as these walls of our mouth of our bottle opener. So we're going to come on up here, we're going to go to 2D contour. We're going to use the same tool, quarter inch flat end mill, coolant to flood, same spindle speed, same cutting feed rate, but for our geometry now, okay, I'm going to move it, some things around. So with our mouth here sort of seen right here, okay, We're going to check this feature right here as well as we're going to also going to select this line right here for our geometry tab and then we're going to check stock contours and we want to restrict our tool boundary here so our tool stays within this yellow area right here. All right and then for our heights tab we want our the bottom height cutting height of our tool. Okay I'm going to go to selection and I'm going to select that surface right there and then for our passes tab we're going to come on over and we are going to select multiple finishing passes. We're going to set the number of passes to three and we're going to use a step over of 0.2. And when you're all done, go ahead and select OK. And you should end up with the following tool path. Now, please, as you watch the video, OK, pause this video and please simulate every single operation to make sure it looks correct. 
All right, so if you see any issues, you can always go back and hopefully fix them. And if you actually simulated this last operation here, you probably noticed that we didn't get the material under the lip of our bottle opener here. So don't worry, we will remove that material later. All right, so now we need to remove the material along the walls and floors of this pocket here. So to do that, let's come on up and start another 2D contour operation. Same tool, coolant to flood, we're going to use the same spindle speed as before, 3000 RPMs, and a cutting feed rate of 30. All right, and then for our geometry tab, we're going to come on over here to the pocket, and we're just going to select that perimeter there. And then for the passes tab, we want to come on down, check multiple finishing passes, set the number of finishing passes to 2, and we're going to use a step over of 0 0.2. Okay, and that'll do it. Let's go ahead and select OK. So next, we need to remove the stock that's left behind on this surface right here. Okay, so to do that, we're coming up to our operations. Let's, uh, let's select our 2D contour operation. We're going to use the same tool, set our coolant to flood, same spindle speed, 3000, and our same cutting feed rate of 30. All right, now for our geometry tab, we're going to select the bottom of that fillet, and we're going to select the bottom of our other fillet. And then we want to check stock contours. Okay, and then we want to check this surface right here. Okay, and what that will do is by checking stock contours, that will restrict your machining area so that our tool stays within this yellow boundary here. Okay, and then we're going to come on over to passes. We're going to check multiple finishing passes. We want to use five of them, and we're going to use a step over of 0.24. Okay, so almost our entire tool will be engaged with the part because remember our tool is a 0.25 inch diameter okay all right that'll do it go ahead and select OK and you should end up with the following toolpath all right so the next thing we need to make are our round fillets here that you see in both sides of our bottle opener and to do that we can't use the in mill tool that we're using now it simply cannot make this feature so what we want to do now is come on up, let's select 2D Contour, and we're going to change our tool now. And we're going to come to our Bottle Opener Tool Library, and we're going to select the Ball Nose End Mill here. It has sort of this round tip on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and select that guy. Once again, we're going to set our coolant to flood, our spindle speed of 30, and our cutting feed rate, we're going to select 30. Okay. And now for geometry here, what we're going to do is we're just going to select the top of that guy. And I'm going to rotate my part around the top of that guy. And then we are going to check stock contours. And we want to just sort of, you got to move your mouse around. It's a little tricky, but you can get it right there. And right there okay so that once again that stock contours will restrict our our machining area so it will only our tool will only stay in this yellow boundary alright and once that's that is done we're gonna come on over here to our tangential extension distance and we're gonna set that distance to 0 0.015 and what that will do is it'll wrap our tool around our circular features here so it'll go slightly farther around here and then Next thing we want to do is come to Heights, and we want to set our bottom cutting tool height to Selection, and we're just going to select this surface right here, okay? And that'll do it for this uh, operation, or 2D Contour. Let's go ahead and select OK. And you should end up with the following tool path. Please simulate this to verify that this ball nose end mill did in fact create these fillets here, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create these chamfers along the sides of our bottle opener. And to do that, we're actually going to use the same tool, a ball nose end mill, and, but we're going to use a unique uh, 3D tool path called a 3D scallop. So go ahead and select that option. Like I said, same tool. Flood is on. Same spindle speed of 3000 and the same cutting feed rate of 30. Okay. Uh, let's come on over here now to geometry. So now we want to go ahead and actually select our chamfers here on the side. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to kind of zoom in 
and as best I can I'm going to select these guys right here okay and if you don't get these little um, arrow looking pointed things don't worry about it okay I'm gonna flip my part over here on this side and do the same thing Okay, that looks pretty good for the geometry there. And the next thing we want to do is now is check contact point boundary. And we're going to enter an additional offset of minus point three zeros, zero, 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 two, five inches. Okay, and then we're going to use a boundary overlap here of zero inches okay and then over here in the passes tab okay we're gonna check limit number of step overs and we're gonna set our number of step overs to one and we're gonna use a step over of not 0.125 but 0 0.0125 okay that'll do it for this operation go ahead and select OK and if you did everything right, you should get a toolpath that looks just like this. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get some of these other chamfers that are along our part. So to do that, we're going to come on up and we're going to use a 2D contour again. But this time we are going to change our tool. And we're going to come to our bottle opener tool library and we're going to select our quarter inch chamfer mill. Let's go ahead and select that guy. Okay, we're going to use a spindle speed of 3000 and a cutting feed rate of 30 okay and then for our geometry what I'd like you to do now is we want to add a chamfer we want to click on the bottom of the chamfer right there I'm going to sort of double click on it and then I'm going to click this open contour here okay and I don't I'm going to select now on the lines that I want to chamfer which would be that one that one, this guy right here, okay. So once you have a blue line that looks like that, go ahead and accept it, okay. And now I'm going to come around and get some of these other chamfers that we need to get. So I'm going to click on the bottom of this one, the bottom of that one, and the bottom of this one, okay. So when you're done, you hopefully have uh, your geometry selected and it looks something like that. And then over in our passes tab, we're going to make sure our chamfer box is checked and we're going to use a chamfer tip offset of 0 0.03. Okay. And what that'll do is it'll send the tip, the very tip of our chamfer tool and it will offset it from our geometries a little bit so we don't end up with you know some jagged burrs on our part all right so once you got that chamfer tip offset set to 0 0.03 go ahead and select OK okay and hopefully you get a tool path that looks like that all right so now we want to create this larger chamfer scene here and to do that we're going to do yet another 2d contour operation we're going to keep the same tool our quarter inch chamfer in mill here we're going to set our coolant to flood our spindle speed of 3000 However, this time we're going to slow our feed rate down to 20, okay, because we're taking off a, a bigger cut here. And then for our geometry tab, we're going to click, double click on this right here, and then select this open contour option, and then hit the plus sign to accept that. So you get this, you should be left with this uh, blue contour right here, all right? And then we're going to set our tangential extension distance now to 0.15. That'll extend our tool path out a little bit. And then over in the passes tab now, we're going to set our chamfer tip offset to 0 0.01. Okay, that'll do it. Go ahead and select OK. And hopefully you get a tool path that looks something like that. So the next thing we want to do now is to create a deburring operation right here on this edge because this edge will wind up really sharp. Okay, so we're going to come on up here and we're actually going to do a 2D chamfer operation. We're going to use the same quarter inch chamfer tool, coolant sent to flood, 
same spindle speed we're going to come back and use a feed rate here of 30 and then for our geometry we're going to select that guy right there okay that edge and then over here in our passes tab now we're going to set our chamfer width to 0 0.008 our chamfer tip offset to 0 0.08 and then we're going to use the default value chamfer clearance of 0 0.025. Go ahead and select OK. And you should hopefully end up with a toolpath that looks something like that. And finally, the last toolpath operation we need to do involves removing this material underneath the lip of our bottle opener. OK, so you're probably thinking, oh, well, our tools can't get underneath there. Well, we have a unique tool we're going to use, so let's go ahead and select another 2D contour operation. We're going to go to our tool library, so go ahead and change our tool. Select the bottle opener tool library, and we're going to select this unique tool called a slot mill or key seat cutter. Okay, and you can see it right here. It kind of has this, um, it's kind of used for getting underneath ledges and whatnot to remove material like we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and select that guy. Okay, we're going to need a spindle speed now of 4,000 and a cutting feed rate now of 20. And then for our geometry tab, we're going to come on over here. We're going to select this blue line right here. And then we're going to check stock contours. And we, I'm going to move my... Um, my tool around and I'm going to select right here okay and remember like I've said before this stock contours will, will restrict our tool path so that it stays within that yellow line okay and now for our heights tab we're going to come down to top height and we're going to do a selection and we're going to select that same surface we just the bottom of our lip here okay and we're going to offset it a distance of minus 0.22 inches and then for our bottom height we're going to go down to selection as well and we're going to just select our bottom surface here okay but we're going to offset it a very small amount so our tool doesn't crash we're going to set that to 0 0.0001 I'm sorry one less zero, 0 0.001 okay and now for our passes tab, we're going to check multiple finishing passes. Okay, and we're going to use a number of finishing passes of two. And we're going to use a step over of 0 0.06. Okay. And then down here, we're going to check multiple depths. And we're going to use a maximum roughing step down of 0 0.06 and we're going to set the number of finishing step downs to zero okay once that's done we're going to come on over here to linking now and we're just going to check keep tool down that should do it for this operation go ahead and select OK alright and you should get the following toolpath alright and when you are completely done Let's go ahead and right click on our setup one and let's go ahead and simulate the entire process. All right, check the uh, stock and make sure your tool paths are seen and let's go ahead and play this guy. I'm gonna speed it up. So there's our facing, our 2D adaptive, our 3D adaptive, okay. And I'm gonna pause it here at the end just to check that key seat cutter to make sure it's removing the material underneath the lip. Okay, I'm going to slow it down. We're coming underneath that lip, removing some material, looks pretty good. Okay, and when you're all done, check the overall machining time of your first setup. You should get a machining time of 10 minutes and 6 seconds. Okay, if you don't please come ask for help, but you should have pretty much the same exact uh, machining time of 10 minutes and 6 seconds. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. We'll see you next time.